Hey there, today I want to cover some of the devices I've used in the past as a programmer. Not all of the devices that I've programmed for are in front of me. Some of them had to go back to old employers. And the reason there's no iPhone in front is because I'm actually using the iPhone to record this video. And on top of that, we have an iPad and an iPod Touch, so iOS is already covered on the table here in front of us. So I first started programming mobile with the Palm Pilot. It was the Palm 3X. It was a black and white device, and it was pretty difficult to program back in those days. Also on top of that, there wasn't much in the way of connectivity, so it was very difficult to write anything that was actually gonna be useful. My first mobile app that I ever got involved in was for the Royal Bank of Canada, and that was back in 1999. Given that we're about to hit 2018, uh, there's 19 years almost of history with me and mobile. I've done a lot of code in the past and I'm gonna cover some of that today. Probably the most influential device that I've ever had would be this. This is an iPod Touch that I actually had before I even used an iPhone. These days, it's too old to be useful. I mean, it does still work and the kids use it just for the iPod part of it because I can load it up with kid-friendly songs and they can use it. But most of the apps that it even came pre-installed with don't work anymore because either they can't talk to the back-end APIs or Apple has stopped supporting the OS to update them to make them still work with current back-end APIs. So things like the clock still works, but uh, you know, if you try to do anything useful, like for instance, YouTube, that's not going to work. Like if I go into the about on this, what is this running? So this is iOS 4.2, that's just crazy. Yeah, this, this is a very, very old device, but it is the most influential device for two reasons. Number one, this is the device that I first started learning to program iOS on. So this is the first device that I had a simple button that did nothing more than change color when you clicked it. This is the device that I learned to program on, and within a couple of years of getting this device, I was the sole programmer at iHeartRadio for nearly a year. So this device has a lot of history, and as I said, the kids use it now just purely to play music on. Another fairly influential device that I did use would be the iPad. Now this one here, this is an iPad free... Yeah, this, this, this is an iPad free. This was the first Retina iPad. Other than the iOS isn't updated on it any longer, this is still my go-to device at home for a lot of what I do because, you know, it's a, uh, you know, reasonably okay device. It, it works. I can do YouTube. I can do browsing. This is actually the second iPad that I've had because I had the first generation iPad when it first came out and then I moved up to this one for the Retina stuff. And, you know, I, up until recently, was still using this device just to double check that code I was writing on iPhone was working on iPad. Now, having just covered two iOS devices, I'd now like to go to an Android device. This here is a Samsung Galaxy Tab 3. And this device probably did more damage for me and my relations with Android than any other device. Having said that, it was a cheap device. At its time, it was a little bit underpowered, uh, and I, I guess that was reflected in its price. Having said that, it was dropped so quickly from updates that I really, really hated it. Especially once I got accustomed to the Apple ecosystem where things get updated on a very, very quick basis. And you know things stay up to date for quite some time, whereas this was pretty much uh, obsolete within about six months of buying it. Having said that, I have done some programming on this device. This is the device that I taught myself how Android works uh, from a programming standpoint. So the reason I'm showing this device right now is whilst I don't like the device, it is a device that was influential in you know how I came to be the type of person that I am now, career-wise. The next device I'd like to cover is this. This is a Windows phone. This is the Huawei W1 and this is the most recent of the Windows phones I have. This one is a Windows 8.1 phone. I was using Windows back when it was Windows CE and you know I went through Windows CE version 2, version 3, version 4, 4.2, then up to Windows Mobile and then uh, you know Windows Phone. Like I have been around Windows because I was a Windows programmer as far back as the mid 90s. I know the background and the architecture and how Microsoft thinks when they design products. I actually really, really love this phone. This is one of those phones that it was a very snappy, quick, simple phone to use, but also from a developer's standpoint, it was a joy to develop. The same problem happened with this phone as what happened with the Android tablet. Uh, basically the OS got dropped far too quickly. Like there is absolutely nothing wrong with this phone. Like this phone is almost in brand new condition. It still works absolutely brilliantly. Like everything I expect this phone to do, like it, it does very, very quickly. It's a uh, wonderful phone. And you know, I 
absolutely adore the form factor on this and the snappiness that it has. You know, and to be able to plug it into Visual Studio and then just start coding with it, it was always a joy to use. But having said that, Microsoft have made things a little bit more complicated since introducing the Windows Store when it comes to distributing uh, you know, code. Now, having said that, there are certain uh, things that if you are a long time Windows programmer would be a little bit foreign on this. Like you really have to keep up with Microsoft's technologies in order to fully understand how these phones work. But having said that, like I still loved this phone and if it wasn't for the fact that, you know, it's stuck on Windows Phone version 8, like I couldn't even put 8.1 on this phone, it basically it had to get retired. But I do love this phone, it's, it's one of my favourite phones I've ever owned and that's saying something given that I spend thousands of hours with iPhone. So yes, that's a quick run through some of the devices. Now some of the devices that you don't see here are Blackberry. They were normally devices that were owned by my employers at the time, so those all had to be returned. And I really didn't enjoy my time programming Blackberry. I'm not a big fan when it comes to Java. So, you know, whilst I do use it and I, I often have to use it, I mean, you know, we have to use it on Android, like the way that BlackBerry implemented the Java system, it was customized to their devices in such a way that that customization just basically made it unfriendly as far as I was concerned to use it. So I basically stayed away from it. The minute that the iOS devices started coming out in 2007, that's when I started to make the leap over to iOS. So these days, I still program on iOS, not obviously these old versions, but the, uh, the version that you're looking through right now. <laughs> So obviously the device that, you know, if I just wobble the little iPhone around, like the device here that I'm now filming on, this is the one that I normally still program on. I do find that iOS is the best of the mobile operating systems to develop for. Having said that, there's a lot of water under the Windows bridge and I love still getting out Visual Studio and just going and programming something on Visual Studio just to see what I can do and what the new technologies are doing. So, you know, I, I'm very much in two camps. I'm both desktop as well as Apple. But having said that, I'm not totally tied to Apple. And as, uh, and as I mentioned earlier, this device, it really did a lot of damage as far as Android goes with me. Having used some more up-to-date Samsung devices, I actually quite like the modern version of Android. But the older versions of Android, I mean, you know, it just was terrible in, in comparison. I mean, this is an older device and it's still far better than this device ever was. It's far more usable, far more easily programmed. Like, I just love it. And the other problem with programming on Android is the fracturing of the Android systems. So, you know, if you bring out an Android app these days, you've got to do it for about 10 different flavors of Android. Different hardware manufacturers are going to have a different outlook of what they want their device to look like. So whilst you can argue on the one side that you know there's more choice from a developer's standpoint, yeah that choice creates complexity and complexity costs time and often customers don't want to pay for that time. And of course the irony with this is people if they have an Android device are less likely to pay for an app than they would if they're on an iOS device. Now I don't know from a market standpoint where Windows people sit but I personally, I always do iOS first because people are willing to pay for that. And then, you know, those who just got a free Android device, they can get the free versions of software later. So I'm going to wrap up there. That's it for today. Speak to you soon. Bye.